Hello and welcome to round two of the Yetter. Version 28 and 2021, we're looking at the lead card final front nine from Tyler State Park West. This tournament is brought to you by Bucks County Disc Golf Alliance. I'm Dave Oster, and here again with Rick Hansen. Rick, how's it going? It's going good. Looking forward to seeing how these guys attack Tyler West here. Uh, Josh Connell's coming in the lead. Finished with a turkey at the end of round one. Uh, Andrew Fish coming in hot off of uh, five birdies. And two new faces for us. Uh, Bradley Good, or Be Good as he's known. And Justin Colley. Uh, I do apologize if we're pronouncing that wrong. But uh, take it away, Dave. What do we got here on hole 19? So we have a poor three at 241 feet. The entire fairway slopes left to right. So righty backhands are going to be playing back into the hill. Lots of trees up by the green that you may or may not get through, but even if you hit them, you may be left with a 20 or 25 foot putt. Yeah, and Tyler's interesting. It doesn't really have two separate courses, although they're referred to as Tyler East and West. It is holes one through 36, and we're going to be playing 19 through 36 today. You see Josh kick a tree on another turnover that he's forced to throw here. Fish sneaking up as long as he gets clear of that big tree. Should have a good look. A good skip around. First look here with Justin. Now, do you think, was he purposely going low there to play for the ground play, or was that a, a misrelease on him? Well, it certainly looked like it was going to work had he missed that tree. It was a good good skip line. I can't say if he was going for it <laughs> or not, but... He didn't look too upset when it came out of his hands. And all these players Ooh. are getting right around to that 35, 40 feet, right around where you can't get too much closer than where we're fishing Bradley are without having an uh, obstructed putt. Fish again didn't seem to like it out of his hand. It was close, just a bit too left side. I feel Let's like see. we've seen Fish chain out a couple times. We have. Ooh. Oh, Bradley as well. Real aggressive. Yeah, a little low, but he fires that right in there. Yeah, it was just above cage, but it was just above cage from his hand to the chains. Yeah, it didn't drop or raise an inch. <laughs> I think everybody's going to get pars here, unless my stroke count is mistaken. Yeah, I think you were correct. There we go. All right, clean start. They wanted a little better, but... Put nothing wrong with par. Yep, it's even slate through the first hole. And we move on to the second, which is hole 20. Par 3, 372 feet. Pretty decent way downhill to start off, and then it levels off, which gives the option to get a forehand skip because the basket turns way right. And if you land on the green, it's not super far, especially with the downhill. And we'll see how these players take it. Yeah, this is this is a good forehand hole. I feel like the forehand also opens the gap for most players. Uh, and with the hard turn, you're as you said, you're looking for that big skip right into that basket. Josh had the advantage as the lefty, but just pulls a little bit outside and catches an early tree. It's uh, fish flirts deep back there. By the way, that's really rough to say. Don't try to say that again. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a tongue twister but he is right on the green good throw All right, let's see what Bradley's got for his forehand
Low burn. This should get a good skip if it's clean. There it is. Whoa! Big flare. But it works. Got uh, 18, 20 footer. I mean, that's exactly what you're looking for. I feel like he was just a little too inside, but he should be fine. Or orally released by Justin. And that combine stop was my heart. Oh, good skip down, though. He should have a clean look. Yeah, he's, he's pinned high, just didn't make the corner, so he should have a straight look at it. Patent pending for Josh. Oh, good kick, too. Nice shot. Oh, that was a good bid out of Justin. Yeah, it didn't even, I don't think he even stepped, but he got the power to get all the way there. Very nice birdie. So two holes in, what's the vibe of the card here so far, Dave? Are they, are they grinding away or are they still going to have a good time? So there is a very light mood between the four of them. Josh and Andrew had not played the last two. We're familiar. We heard a little bit of conversation between Andrew and Justin there. Kind of getting the feel of each other, what preferences they have. They're specifically talking about if they care too much about if someone is a little bit further, a little bit closer on the green, who goes first? And they both agreed that if it's more convenient, someone's ready, either don't care. So it's good, good vibe for the card. They're, they're both feeling it pretty well. Very good. On to hole three. We have a par three, 211 feet. Your aiming point is right over the cutout of this log pile. Are there a forehand or backhand for Josh um, playing friendly on this part of the course again for him and distance is not the issue it is the accuracy and Andrew just makes me look silly and throws a tomahawk <laughs> I was just about to say I'm not sure if that was quite tomahawk or forehand it was sort of a tomahand <laughs> <laughs> as a forehawk yeah, right yeah it was somewhere in the middle, but the end result was perfect. Absolutely. Nice smooth backhand out of Josh. Oh, that should be real nice. Yep. Showing how the shape of the lefty hole works to his advantage. Justin going what looks to be a little backhand turnover. Again, some of these holes here at Tyler are short enough that if you have the confidence in a certain line, you can really throw whatever you want because the distance is not an issue. Justin burns that into the ground a little bit. Press a bid. Fish from what looks like Circle's Edge. Chains again. That has to be half a dozen times we've seen him already this tournament. And he's still within a stroke of the lead, yeah. so that's got to say something. I mean, that's, that's when you know the player's really good. They're, they're having an off day, but they're, they're battling it right at the lead. Yeah, and I believe we actually have two past champions on this card. We mentioned that Andrew Fish was on the, the first round. Bradley Good is also a past champion of this tournament. Oh, Josh, off the back of top. Bradley taps out his par. We will move on to hole 22, 
a par four at 318 feet. Pretty tight gap off the tee, and then slight left and uphill quite a ways for your next shot. Players want to land somewhere at the bottom of the hill to give them a look at getting to the green in two, and then perhaps getting their birdie. Staying on the fairway is uh, pivotal for this hole. Yeah, and this this hill is is way up there, as it looks like fish came off a little early. Uh, but it's made worse because you know you got to go right back down on hole 23. Yeah, playing these 36 holes at Tyler in one day, the fatigue certainly sets in and is one of the obstacles of this tournament. Stamina is key here. Not to mention that the second half has most of the elevation of the entire course. Nice turnover there by Josh. Kicks right. Quickly gets out, stays in the woods. Looked like he almost jumped on that forehand. Yeah, he was underneath of a pine tree for that, so he had very awkward kind of a crouched forehand. Tough to get power out of that position. Nice approach shot up there. Good up by Justin, leaving a maybe 35 footer. Nice. That should be an easy bird for Josh. Fish got closer than I thought off the tee up there. Yeah, I think with the curve a little bit left, it seemed to fade out, but it was actually still heading towards the basket a little bit. As Justin almost saves the par. That would have been a really nice par save. As Bradley takes the bird. He's taking a page out of Mike Moser's book and playing through the woods all the way up. <laughs> Andrew takes the bird. I think Justin's going to tap out for par. Oh, bogey, I'm sorry. And Josh, to hold on to that one shot lead, Bradley and Fish tied right behind. So we're heading back down the hill, like you mentioned, at hole 23, par three, 318 feet. Most players will probably go to the right side of this log pile. Josh may try to go to the left as the lefty. And the green has a bit of a drop off behind it, but not too much that it should make a, a difference if any player does wind up down there. Yeah, I think there's a, a little rock wall behind the basket and then maybe 15, 20 feet further behind that, a bigger one. Yes. I think that actually kicked off of a tree for Andrew, but just made it to about circle two. Bradley did not like that out of his hand. Wow. Flexed right. Line, <laughs> Makes it through there. She should have a putt. The elevation change on these last two holes and more to come is interesting in how the disc selection is made by these players because throwing downhill makes your discs much more understable. So I've noticed that even throwing a fairly stable disc, it'll still turn over. So these players have to adjust for that. As we see Bradley's like hit a little tree up there. Nice putt out of fish, good run. 
That little rock pile did help him out. Kept them in just a few feet. Oh, get in. Oh, good run, Bradley. Unfortunately, that was to save his par. Wow, he did it. Nice pot. That's my gosh. Birdie. Circle two. Maybe 40 feet. Take a look at it again. He made a couple of these on our round one coverage, too. He did. That nice hyzer putt. Right in there, low left. Nowhere to go but in. Testing with a par. He's starting to lose touch with the other three players right now. Bradley losing just one <laughs> stroke from Andrew. These players uh, you can see the camaraderie continues as we move on to hole 24. We have a par five at 476 feet. Another par five under 500 feet, but by no means easy. Got to go back up the hill around to the left. Most of these players are probably just trying to get to the corner. So another shot to set themselves up for a third shot, getting to a fairly guarded green with a lot of trees around and an OB road behind. Yeah, this, this hole is deceivingly long for as short as it actually is. It's, it's that elevation change. And I think you want to go high and try and get get that skip off the top of the mound to help get your extra distance. This looks right. There you go. This is one when I play, we generally take a break after the up and down. We take the break before we got to go up again. <laughs> yeah. Have a sip of water, maybe a snack to refuel. Yeah, make sure to hydrate out here. Early release by Brad. Didn't fight through either. Nice flick back into the fairway. Tom Tomahawk. Kick left for trouble. That is the third or fourth Tomahawk we've seen some Justin. It seems that that is his preferred throw as opposed to a forehand. Makes for some interesting lines, too. Oh, came out real early. All right. Not a bad kick, though. He could have been punished much more than that. Justin playing army golf right now, back and forth across the fairway. Oh, that's the right distance. Oh, it gets kicked down. And this hole is showing its teeth. There's that uh, not quite yeah. forehand tomahawk thing again. Now I know what I'm practicing tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe that's what you need for this course. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, I wonder if that's just a ridiculously overstable high-speed disc that he's just barely putting a flick on. It looks like he's giving it some power to keep it from floating too far left, so it might be. Nice approach by Josh there. Ooh, brave run with the road and the drop-off right behind it's going to roll, that's the way you want it to roll, though. Nice putt. I feel like Justin needed some confidence right there. Yeah, that was a great putt to save par. Oh, a little low for Andrew. And uh, I'd like to give a shout-out for this hole. We had one eagle on the day by Brandon Copenjan, the only one out of the entire field. Nice job, Brandon. That's a that's a solid three. And 
if I'm watching this card, it almost seems like how could you possibly do that? There's just, <laughs> it seems like there's no lines the way these players are hitting trees on seemingly every throw. But I guess it is possible. Yeah, I mean, that's it's going to take two quality throws in order to get up there. So. Absolutely. And I'd love to know how he made it. If it was a long throw in or he actually made it onto the green in two throws. But we will move on to hole 25, par 3, 302 feet. This actually plays like an island where you have to cross the road on your first throw. Otherwise, go to a drop zone with the road continuing all the way around the hole up to behind the basket. So even if you land inbound and then skip long, you have to come all the way back to the drop zone that is in the road right in front of the tee. Well, I'm not mistaken, the last time I was here, the right side of this island was, was not, it didn't look anywhere near as nice as it looks right now. So great job by the club. Yeah, this course is looking great. The, the quite a few grassy fairways and woods, which I think look absolutely beautiful. It's a great, I agree. great course design, and they're they're all very well manicured. So, I second your shout out to the crew and the the disc golf club. Oh, late turn on that! Really nice shot. Just wow. trickles right up to the basket on that well manicured grass. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it great when it just works out like that? Yeah, absolutely. If that grass was a half an inch longer, he would have had a twenty footer. <laughs> oh, Justin turns over a little too much. That's ob. Yeah, and so he made it all the way up, pin high, maybe even past the pin. Because of the way this whole place, he's got to come all the way back to almost the tee. Yeah, there looked to be a little uh, hitch in Bradley's swing right there. Yeah, maybe a footing issue, issue, a bit of a slip, I'm not sure, but you're right. He stayed safe, though. Can still get the ball on this. Oh, no! And a lucky kick off a log to stay inbounds. That looked like it was going out again. Oh, good run. No roll. There you go. Probably not what he was looking for on the hole with a, a tap-in par, but off the slip issue on the tee, I think I'll take it. Yeah, fortunate not to have gone out of bounds. Brave run by Justin. <laughs> Is that a... Uh... Fish's dry sense of humor coming in again, man. Oh, yes. <laughs> he uh, it was a great player to, f to follow. Was, you know, all the players on these cards were, but Fish has, has that sense of humor like you were talking about. It just really keeps the mood light, makes it fun to filming for us, and I'm sure playing with him as well. Yeah, he's the most well-known around the country of our players right here. But what do we got on hole 26, Dave? We have another par 4, a little bit more distance, 575 feet. A couple gaps off the tee. I think a lot of these players are going to try to go for the left gap and land either in or just across. There's kind of a valley on the left side. Um, and then second shot up to this very raised basket on top of a, a small hill that you do not want to go over because it is an extreme drop off. Oh, fish kicked just as he started to get down. Makes the whole play even longer from down there. Flirting with the trees. And this was the line that I was talking about. Perfect wow. for, we keep saying it, the lefty Josh. Gets around the trees, back over that set down area, and back up into the main fairway. Good, good line up to the green. <laughs> uh, Bradley saying best gap ever right there. I guess he wasn't shooting for that really tight gap. No, more direct, but certainly <laughs> not the preferred one. Oh, come down, come down. Oh, not that far. All right. Fish early. Wow. Wow. Did it came that stay on the hill? 
that was a great recovery. Yes, I was just about to say that it did stay on the hill. It's a little bit left side, a little bit low, but it, I think it's edge of circle. Bradley looks to like he came up a little bit short. And Justin is so far left. He's on the left side of that first mound, throwing with maybe the first forehand that we've seen from him, <laughs> trying to get back to the main fairway. And we couldn't really see where that landed. He actually is in a fairly decent position. He's on the back side of the hill where the basket is, and we'll have maybe a circle to look at it. I didn't know there was a forehand line back there. Yeah, he found it. Oh, no. Sit down. Yeah. Unfortunately, that did roll back down the other side. That is the trick, tricky part of this basket is if you don't make it or lay up, it's very likely you're going back down the other side. Yeah, Josh getting lucky that that grabbed. Good comeback by Justin. That was an eventful par. Yes. This is where Andrew's second drive ended up, so not too bad. There you go. Good pot. Not bad at all, actually. <laughs> no. And I think Josh is going to tap in for par here, so that's going to give us a tie atop the leaderboard. Uh, you are correct. That one little tree did stop him from going all the way down. Yeah. yeah. And it looked like the wind was starting to pick up out here as well and when it's windy here at Tyler it can be it can wreak havoc yep and we started to feel it then and on hole 27 which is a par 4 575 feet uphill off the tee and then a bend to the left then a, probably another 300 to 325 feet to a very slanted green with a rock wall at the bottom where a lot of discs tend to filter down to um so yeah, we'll a, see how these players are able to navigate it. Yeah, it's a very touchy landing. That looks to be solid. Early release. I don't think we've seen Josh release early like that yet. No, he's been on point with that, that turnover. But, like you said, first time we've really seen him misfire. He called, We heard him call OB, but he didn't actually land out of bounds, which we'll, we'll see in a second. The, the red flag never came up, so. All right. And you mentioned uh, on our round one coverage that each hole has a name here. I just noticed this one, Constant Sorrow. This, uh, that's a great hole name. It sure is. <laughs> And the, uh, the two holes that we call the names out for, I believe, are both references to the uh, book or movie, O Brother, Where Art Thou? The that's Soggy what, Bottom and Man of Constant Sorrow. That's, that's what caught my eye there. And uh, I will spare our audience me singing, but trust <laughs> me, it's going in my head right now. That is one of my favorite movies. Justin trying to become bona fide. Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that looked to skip down pretty good. Hopefully not too far. Yeah, I think he's just on the left side. Come on, Gator. Come on, Gator. Asking his Gator to flip up. Hold. Hold. Rock wall catch him. Oh, it tried Almost. to hop over. That's what that green does. He landed... 50 short of that wall and farther up on the hill, but still felt it all the way down and like you saw, almost over the wall. Wow. Oh, okay. Oh, that's going to be a, an interesting putt to yeah, well below Yeah, a little bit team. higher, it does kind of tend to be a little flatter, but this is what you want to try to do is come in going from left to right to avoid that roll down, although this is a little bit far. And if that if that was the zone, which we think it was, they they have uh, they have good grabbing power on the ground. Oh, oh a yeah. little early left. Looks like it might have stopped right there near the tree. I believe right by that big tree is where he's okay. going to be putting from. Look at this putt. I do not feel Ooh. envious of him. Oh no. Oh. Still rolling. 
Oh. Oh, good run at it, Justin, from a, an obstructed lie. Wow. That just shows you how, how steep that hill is. You saw Bradley give that. And this has to be four times as tall as these guys are above their head. <laughs> it's such a steep hill. It looks steep on camera. Like yeah. we said in the first round, it usually doesn't even look steep. So when it does look steep, it's really steep. Yeah. This whole this whole played over par, right? Oh, absolutely. It played almost a full stroke over par at wow. 4.76. Yeah. That's what you'd expect, isn't it? it Only uh... the second hardest hole in the course, though. And I'll keep the hardest hole as a secret because we haven't gotten there yet. Oh, stay tuned. Well, I think uh, I think that concludes our, our front nine here in round two. With a, a big swing there, uh, Andrew Fish moving into the lead with Josh's double bogey on nine. Uh, Bradley just playing pretty solid, still in the mix. Justin, an up and down round, but he's he needs to turn it around here and get something going on our back nine. Right, Dave? Absolutely. And we will find out if he does on our next video. So if you'd like this one, um, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already to our channel, see more content, and click on the video on your bottom left to see the finale to the Yetter in 2021. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next hole.